What's up, Internet? We're here today to talk about the 150-gallon Cherry Shrimp Aquarium, which is a little bit odd to most people that I have 150 gallons of aquarium dedicated to Cherry Shrimp, Neocaridinus, Sakura Shrimp. It doesn't really matter what you call them. I think everybody finds it to be a little bit odd that I would make an aquarium this big with these little inhabitants. But I will tell you, I do have two guppies in here <laughs> at some point in time. We'll breed and there'll be more guppies, but I'm actually making this video to give you guys a full runaround of exactly how this setup operates because tomorrow it's getting rescaped, so I wanna make sure to talk to people about this aquarium before that happens. Now, the main reason for setting up this aquarium ahead of time with the cherry shrimp that are in it is that at some point in time I will be doing crystal shrimp in here again and I actually wanted to mature this system with something a little bit easier um, as far as tolerances go. So we went ahead with the cherry shrimp. At this point in time there's probably about 500, maybe 800, maybe a thousand shrimp in here and at some point in time in the future they'll get rehomed to a new place. But in the meantime, I went with the cherry shrimp because of the tolerances they're able to handle as the system gets broken in. They've been in here for uh, probably about four months now, maybe a little bit longer than that. I really don't know the timeline, but this aquarium has been set up for a while now and is basically ready for its uh, rescape to get ready for the future of what's happening with it. One of the questions I get all the time is, what kind of substrate do I have in here that are growing these plants so well? The substrate is ADA uh, Amazonia, Fluval Stratum, and Fluorite Black Sand. It's actually a mixture of all three, uh, sort of, not necessarily layered, but most of the sand is towards the front and the other two are basically just mixed. Uh, it, this is a, a mixture of substrates that actually just gives me real long-term use to be able to be replenished from water changes and occasional fertilizers. Uh, this gets a water change once every two weeks and fertilizer very rarely. I couldn't even tell you how rarely I actually add fertilizer to it. It's pretty much maintained by the water changes and um, feeding the shrimp is essentially all that's really go realistically going into this system. And I feel like this is a system that somebody at home could easily replicate in like a 20 gallon or a 40 gallon or something along those lines and you know have a lot of enjoyment from uh, setting up a system just like this, just in a smaller version. Uh, the driftwood that is in here is manzanita, and it's actually, there are these kind of display stands that I've, uh, I've actually have a video about, uh, if you could find, <laughs> that you could find the video of assembling these manzanita uh, display pieces that go in here. You can see there's a lot of Anubias, uh, Bucacalandra, uh, Guppy Grass, Java Ferns, a lot of Cryptocrine, uh, even uh, the uh, lilies that are in here and whatnot. Big mixture of plants. One of the plants that I always have problems with growing is is, uh, is a Monte Carlo, basically because of how soft my water is here on the west coast. But other than that, everything has been growing quite well. You can even see the java fern actually has a lot of uh, babies uh, coming off of it and stuff like that. So everything else is either flowering or um, at least replicating as best it can. The lights that are on here is actually the Fluval Fresh and Plant 2.0. It's a super long name for a light, but it's essentially an LED light that uh, extends up to 60 inches. Uh, and uh, that can easily be found on Amazon or something along those lines. Um, there is CO2 injected into this aquarium, running into a reactor down below in the sump. Um, we'll go down there in a second. Uh, in the meantime, the one thing I wanted to point out is uh, the shrimp food that I use is actually Shrimp King. I don't have anything to do with this company. I just find this food to be a real one-stop uh, food action for the old shrimps in here. Uh, the Shrimp King Complete, actually, this is the one that I find to kind of be the best comprehensive food um, for them. Uh, along with the driftwood and all that, I, uh, I put in uh, catapa leaves once every two weeks. I normally add two to five, just depending on how much 
I want to uh, add into the sump system down below. Um, other than that, it pretty much is carefree with just kind of cleaning the glass and stuff like that, which is why I would definitely recommend a tank like this for anybody uh, in their home use. There's a lot of movement and things going on with, uh, as you can see, a lot of the shrimp are right down here, kind of, there was a chunk of food there, they have eaten it, and now they're kind of just hanging around scavenging all the little bits and stuff like that. Um, there are some ram's horn snails that are in here, along with some pond snails and uh, Malaysian trumpet snails. But other than that, and the two guppies, that's pretty much all that's really in here. Um, but I have to say, it's a very enjoyable tank. It's been up and running, and it just hasn't been fussy at all. Uh, let's, let's pop down into the sump real quick, and we'll take a look at what's going on down there. All right, so as you can see down here in the sump, I actually have a ton of plants hanging around in this first chamber along with a lot of biomedia that's previously been bagged up. I also have some potted plants and things that are actually just being held down here. These are the two overflow pipes. One is for the emergency and one is the regular. Um, the center chamber right here is actually where I keep a lot of uh, either leftover plants or grow out plants or things that need to be adapted to my water column. And then you can see here, this is actually just the filter material, the filter floss material that's actually taking the fines out of the water and stuff like that, along with a mesh screen that's actually going to stop the shrimp from coming over into the final chamber and ending up in the uh, return pump right here. So this is the return pump that's actually a DC pump uh, that's actually controllable. I can actually raise it up and lower it down just by a push of the button. Heaters down here. And then this is the CO2 reactor where the CO2 comes in from this line right here and then only runs, um, you know, it basically starts up an hour before the lights come on and then it turns off uh, an hour before the lights go off. So it's actually offset that way every single day and just operates pretty smoothly. As I mentioned before, the uh, catapa leaves are right. <laughs> this thing just keeps getting in the way. The uh, catapa leaves are right down here in the sump. As you can see, they're breaking down. Once they're fully broken down, I'll add some more of that in. And that's basically just uh, realistically all the maintenance that I have to do, especially uh, other than just the water changes. And that's pretty much it. The lights that are down here are actually just GU10 LED lights. Pretty simple setup, not uh, nothing, nothing too crazy. Actually works out really well this way. I have a lot of extra water volume and those kinds of things, uh, but it makes this a super simple setup. So pop up back up to the tank and take a look at uh, everybody that's in here. As you can see, there are a lot of shrimp in here and stuff like that, and uh, very enjoyable uh, tank, and this is definitely an aquarium that somebody could set up at their house and it not be super labor intensive to take care of it, and it uh, should be really enjoyable to anybody out there. This is a highly recommended shrimp for anybody who's starting out. These would be the shrimp that you would want to start out with. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to check out any of the other videos that I have on this channel. There's a lot of them. Uh, watch out for the live streams because those ones are two hours long. So uh, try to be a little bit committed if you're, uh, if you're going to be watching some of those. And uh, if not, you can look through all the short videos and check all that stuff out. If it's been uh, a while since this video has been uploaded, go ahead and try and find the Rescape videos of this uh, 150 and see what it looks like in the future. Later!